Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the prayer, praise, and worship experience of the Parenthood Ministries. We're glad you come to worship with us today. I'm here today with our senior pastor, the Reverend Gloria Wright Cox. Good morning, Good morning everybody. of you this morning, and we're glad that you've joined us in this prayer, praise, and worship experience. Let's have some church. Let's give God some glory. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good, isn't he? God is good. Amen. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. Oh, yeah. For you are God and God. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Do you love him this morning more than anything? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to 
tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Ooh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than it needs me. Ooh, I love you, Jesus. Say that, say that. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. Amen. Good it's morning, prayer time morning, now. Good morning. Good morning. Good and we morning, hope everybody. that you will join us in yes. prayer as we go to God's throne of grace and mercy. Yes, yes. Thank Let us pray. You, Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we're so grateful to see another Sunday that we never saw before where we could worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for waking us up this morning as last night's lying down and that life is as well with us as it is. Come before you, O oh God, this morning because we know you are a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. We know, God, that we can cast our cares upon you today because we know that you care for each and every one of us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come to your throne. Thank you, God, for we know that you can turn our midnights into bright tomorrows. We know, God, you can heal us when we're sick, feed us when we're hungry, clothe us when we're naked, shelter us when we're outdoors. Love on us when nobody else cares. Yes, yes, yes. Be a part of our life, God, because we know without you we can do nothing but with you all things are possible. We pray, God, that you would bless Pastor Gloria as she comes this morning to bring us a word from the Lord. We pray, God, that you would draw us close. We pray, God, that you would continue to be active in our lives. We thank you, God, for our families. We thank you for our children and grandchildren, for our spouses, for our friends and loved ones, for our churches that we worship in, for our pastors who preach to us. Yes, we thank yes. you, God, for turning our houses into your sanctuary. We thank you, God, for showing up in our lives. We have so many things to be grateful and thankful for. Thank you, Jesus. But thank more you. than that, God, we just thank you that we're your children that you allow us to live an abundant life here and be able to be prepared to live with you eternally in the next. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Son, yes. your Son, our Savior, who yes. died on yes. Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. God, we thank, thank you, you. We bless thank your name this morning. We worship you this morning. We give you glory, we give you adoration, and we give you praise. And so God, be with us in this experience as we continue to worship you be with us all this week and let us always know we can lean and depend on you and call on you because you are a present help in time of trouble and surely you are God who hears and answers our prayers this is your servant's prayer this morning the mighty and resurrected name of our true and living Savior and soon coming King, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.
to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. No one else will. Nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find my way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, Amen. a word praise of hallelujah. hallelujah, praise the Lord. God is so good to each and every one of us. I guess I'm going to leave that open there. Can you watch that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
I have. I guess this is the Lord has been so good today. I just can't say that enough. God All right. Amen. Is good. God is good. God is good. I was up at well, what I actually You've was been up praying at for five, four more. and then I've been praying for everybody. <laughs> Amen. This morning, there's nothing like being before the throne of grace, not only for yourself, but for others. And God has moved, and um, you know, God is hearing and answering everybody's prayer. I'm thanking everyone for being on this morning. God bless you. God bless you. I see Julie and Lori. I think I saw Pastor Ogletree on. I believe Vanessa Dobbins is on. Amen. Donna Clater Drummer is here. Holly Gruber is here. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the God, um, God in prayer. Father God, we come this morning. Uh, again, thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. You have given us another day to praise your name and uplift you. And Father, I ask that you would touch me right now as I decrease and let you increase. Let you preach your word to your people this morning. I hope that that everyone will receive what you are saying to us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Giving honor to God. Uh, who's the head of my life. I'm giving honor to the bishop, Bishop Richard Cox. Bless you, sweetheart. And uh, we want to keep Evangelist Brinkley in, in our hearts today. She is in the air. Uh, she said she'll be landing about 9.30. So we want to bless the Lord for her, her being on her mission of giving the word in song and in uh, word and spoken word. Uh, her being able to uh, visit her family and uh, come back safely. So we give God all the praise and Amen. the honor this morning. Um, if you turn with me uh, to St. Luke. Well, wrong one. St. Matthew, sorry. St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. 13 through the 14th verse. I am reading this morning from the Good News Bible. The 13th verse of the 7th chapter of Matthew reads as thus, Go in through the narrow gate, because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy, mm -hmm. and there are many who travel it. The 14th verse says, But the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it is hard, and there are few people who find it. Hmm. Life is full of choices this morning. Preach. We know that... Um, Sometimes uh, we find ourselves standing and not really knowing which way to go, whether we should go north or south or east or west. Should we go left or right? Should we go forward or backwards? And even should we just stand still? Hmm. But life is full of choices this morning. Just waking up this morning, we had many choices to make. Um, whether we were going to get out the bed at 5 o'clock, or whether we were going to get out at 6 or 7, we had that choice. We had the choice of uh, what we were going to wear. I know we're in pandemic mode, but we still have to make a choice of what we're going to wear. Mm -hmm. I have to Try to keep up with what did I wear last time because um, I started to put on an outfit the other day and realized that that was the same outfit I taught in on Monday, on last Monday, and I'm not going to put that on for this Monday. So we have many choices. We have uh, many choices of what we wear, what we're going to eat, even what kind of car we drive. Uh, 
there's just so many different choices. Each day we are confronted with so many, many choices in our daily, our daily time, our daily walk. Even life, uh, do we want to have children? Do we want to get married? Preach. <clears throat> what kind of career am I going to choose? Choices, choices, choices. And even we have choices dealing with our daily conduct. Uh, am I going to go off on you today? Or I'm going to let you slide. <laughs> am I going to be angry or am I going to be happy? Uh, we have these choices in life. Well, let me tell you that. Really, the most important choice you will make in your life is whether or not you are going to follow Jesus and give your life to him. Mm -hmm. All the other important decisions in life hinge on that choice. We will be standing here and we're standing here with two signs this morning. One pointing to Jesus and eternal life. And the other pointing to a path of destruction. What choice are you going to make this morning? So our, our message this morning really is decision, desire, discipline, destination. Hmm. Decision, desire, discipline, and destination. As we look at this scripture today, here in Matthew, Preach. we're going to talk about the entrance way. And you know, when I read the scripture, you know, we've been kind of putting uh, all of this at, at one thing. We, we just talk about the straight gate and the narrow gate and the, the wide gate, but really there's kind of four different things going on here. We're talking about the two gates, which is narrow and wide. And we're also talking about the path mm. of narrow and wide. Preach. So let me begin with the entrance, which is decision. Decision, the wide gate. The wide gate is one of those choices that we're standing in need of right now. Notice okay. that Jesus gives us a choice as to which gate we are going to enter. All right. We can't no longer, we need to stop trying to blame everybody else. It's your choice which direction you're going. Preach. Which direction are you going? The gate is wide and is easy to enter. Now, you know, naturally, we're going to choose the wide gate because we can get all of our stuff through there. We don't want the narrow gate because all of our stuff can't go through there. But at the same time, spiritually, the wide gate is wide mm -hmm. because there's more people that are going to want to go through that wide gate. Spiritually, the wide gate, you want to drag all of your baggage. Preach. Many people are choosing this way. And even if you don't make a choice and you just stand in there, you still have made a choice. The wide gate, mm -hmm. the wide door, or the gate is inviting to us. Preach. On our journey through life, many will want to take as much baggage with them as they can. Mm -hmm. The wide gate allows for that. We can drag all the baggage we want to through the wide gate. Preach. The wide gate can handle the baggage of pride, of lust, of malice, of hate, unforgiveness, adultery, fornication. You Preach. see where I'm going. Preach. Preach. 
As we stand here at the wide gate, we peer down the path and it looks very wide and inviting to us. Well, let's look at the narrow gate, the narrow door. The narrow gate does not have room for anything but you. You must leave all the baggage behind. Jesus tells us to take up our cross and follow him daily. This implies that our agenda is the one that Jesus has. It's not our thing, it's Jesus's. And Matthew 16, 24 through 26 says, be willing to die to self. Absolute surrender. We must be willing to die to follow Jesus. We need to follow Jesus and surrender our lives totally to him. Just choosing the narrow gate. There is no room for chasing after the world and its pleasures. There's no room for unforgiving spirits. And there is no room for the self-righteous. Preach. The narrow gate will not be as easy for us to walk through. All things that Jesus has told us up to this point has been to prepare to be able to walk through the narrow gate gate. Which gate? The decision is yours. If you are going to enter in the narrow gate, Jesus must be first in your life. Is he first in your life? Have you made that decision? The key word again is decision. God allows you to choose for yourself. Nobody else can make the choice but you. Some make the choice by just doing nothing. Again, when we choose not to decide, we choose to go through the wide gate by default. Mm, You preaching this morning. Preach. Well, let's look at the path. We've opened the door. You can open that wide gate or you can open the narrow gate. Well, let's look at the path. The path includes desire and discipline. The wide path. Again, two gates, narrow and wide. Two paths, narrow and wide. Desire and discipline. The wide path is the one most traveled. Everybody on that path. Everybody. It is the easy path. I don't have to do much to get on that path. You do not have to do anything to walk this path. This path is apathy. And I looked up the word apathy. Apathy is the lack of feeling or emotion. The lack of interest or concern. Are you apathetic today? The path is wide because there are many ways that lead to destruction. Some will travel down substance abuse street. Some will walk down Pride Avenue. Others will travel down Materialism Way. Some will travel down Sexual Sin Estate Road. Some will take Hate Street. Or they will walk down Murder Avenue. Many will walk down Apathy Lane. The wide path have many ways that you can take and stay on the path. Proverbs 12 and 15 tells us the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Hmm. What the counsel we're listening to is whatever our mind tell us to do. That's what we want to do. Proverbs 14 and 12 tells us there is a way which seems right That's to right. a man, mm-hmm. but its end is the way of death. The well-traveled path has no rules, no restraints. We don't like rules. We don't want no restraints. We don't want anything holding us down. We don't want anybody to tell us what to do. It is the path that has everyone doing right in their own eyes. We can see that now through the pandemic. Everybody choosing to do what they want to do, but it's your choice. It's your choice. Not going to get mad at you. It's your choice. You want to wear a mask? It's your choice. 
You want to get the shot? It's your choice. What are the consequences if you get sick? But it's your choice. Amen. The white path is the one that most of the people will be on. It is the path that most of the people will encourage you to walk down. You know, people will encourage you to do wrong. Preach, preach. No, you are going the right way. You're doing the right things, and they still bring things to you so Preach. that you can do the wrong thing. But as you stand, stand there looking at this path, are you going to be swayed by what everyone else is doing? You know, as parents, we tell our children, you know, uh, they tell you, well, everybody else is doing it. We say, well, if everybody jump off the, the, the cliff, you going to jump too? Think about it. Just think about it today. Will you choose the wide path? Still, if you are doing nothing, you are already on the wide path. The narrow path. The narrow path. In Luke 13 and 24 tells us this. Strive to enter by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. The word for narrow means difficult to be entered. You can't take all that baggage through the narrow door and down the narrow path. It's not going to go. Access is not denied to people. They keep themselves out. It's your choice. You keeping yourself out. Hmm. You, you doing it. Morning. Preach. I'm doing it. We all make a choice. The word narrow. It is difficult to walk this path because it takes discipline and desire. That's right. That's right. Do you desire to go the right way? Or do you want to just do what you want to do? Amen. Do you have the discipline to go down the narrow way? The discipline, desire, and discipline. Let me tell you a story. A little boy, he was caught doing some stuff he shouldn't have been doing. So his mother said this. How do you expect to get into heaven? <laughs> he said, he stood there, he thought a minute, thought about it, and then he said this. Well, I'll just run in and out. I'll run in and run out and in and keep slamming the door until they say, for goodness sake, come in or stay out. Then he said, I'll go in. <laughs> Are you doing that today? Hmm. I'm going in. I'm going out. I'm in and I'm out. I'm in and I'm out. And when Jesus comes back and he catches you and he says, what are you doing? You said, I'm, I'm in with you. That's not going to work. <laughs> A lot of people think that they can enter the gate when they are a kid and then they will just enter into heaven. No, it don't work like that. You will not get to heaven unless you stay. You got to stay on the path Preach. that God has set for us. You cannot enter the gate and then make your own path. Many of us have accepted Jesus Christ as our in our childhood. But we still, during that time, we still have to walk the path. And when we get off of the path, we still have to go back to the Lord, ask the Lord for forgiveness for what we have done. And then it takes, as we're growing, we must grow in Christ. We're not going to get there without growing in Christ. Growing in Christ means praying and studying his word, applying it to our lives. Help us through these times. Prayer. There is only one way to God. There is only one path to God. There is only one truth that leads to God. That path, that path, that way, that truth is Jesus Christ. You guys heard me mention this before. St. John 14 and 6 says, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's the word. The key word again to these paths is desire and discipline. Desire is to long or to hope. It's a conscious impulse. It's conscious thought. Discipline is control gained by enforcing obedience. Let's see, that's the problem. We don't want to be obedient. And order. We don't want order. Isn't that scripture that mm -hmm. said something about Everything order? Everything should be done decently and in Everything order. Everything should be done decently and in order. Everything. Everything. Everything must be under control. Under God's control. If we are going to walk on the narrow path, we must have the discipline not to be drawn off the path by the majority who are not on it. How many times have people tried to drag you off the path so that you can participate in things you know is wrong? You know it. I've done it. No good and well it was wrong. No good and well God wasn't pleased. I tried it anyway. Okay. It takes desire to walk the path. The desire to see further than the moment. A desire to please Jesus and not others. We need to please Jesus and not others. Please Jesus and not others. So, with that, we come to the destination. Where are you going to end up? The end of the path. Whatever path you choose. Wide or narrow. Where are you going to end up? Well, the wide path leads to destruction. The scripture tells us which one are we going to be on? Are we going to heaven or are we going to hell? Which one is your choice? Philippians 3, 18 through 19. For many walk of whom I often told you and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is is their appetite mm -hmm. and whose glory is in their shame Preach. who set their minds on earthly things you preaching this that's morning. hell wide destruction you're eating whatever you want to eat we do not like to talk about hell but it is real as heaven do you notice in the word of God that there are opposites? There's light, there's dark, there's right, there's wrong. You see there's opposites? There's male and female. He gives us both. He's giving you a choice this morning. All right. Narrow, wide. He's making he's asking you a question this morning. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to the bishop. Do you want to trust the Bible? Or do you want to trust what other people who are on the wrong path say? The end of the narrow path. The end. The end. The end. The end of the wide path is destruction. But the end of the narrow path is heaven. St. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Yes. Hebrews 10 and 36 tells us, For you have need of, of endurance so that when you have done the will of God you may receive what was promised. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, the heart has not imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus tells us that the narrow road leads to life. Where is the path that you are following going to lead you? Where is it taking you now? Right now.
right now, right now. Jesus is the only path to God. At the end of the narrow path, you will find eternal life today. Decision, desire, discipline, and destination. Life is about choices. Life is about the freedom to make the choices. God loves us so much that he did not take that ability to choose away from us. God does not send people to hell. We choose to go there ourselves. We respond to the grace of God through Jesus Christ. We choose to go there by the way we respond to the grace of of God through Jesus Christ. How are you responding to the word of God? Deuteronomy 30 and 19 through 20 says, God told Moses to tell the people that they needed to choose who they were going to serve. God said that life would be found in obeying him. Joshua, upon entering the promised land, Joshua told the people to choose you this day whom you would serve. Joshua 24, 13 through 15. Elijah was about to take on the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. He told the people to choose either follow God or follow Baal. 1 Kings 18, 21. God never forced people. To follow him. He gives you a choice. The question is. Are you going to follow. Jesus or are you going to. Follow the other. Brother. The devil. Which one are you going to choose. God loves you enough. To give you a choice. Today. If that choice is the wrong one. God loves you enough. To let you make that choice. But it is with. A heavy heart. He doesn't want to see anybody lost. Jesus wants all of us to choose the right direction this morning. Romans 10 and 9 says, "Thou, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We know that Romans 6 and 23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So this morning, I just wanted to let you know that you have a decision to make. What type of desire do you have? What type of discipline are you going to have? And where are you going in your destination. Thank you for listening. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. God bless you. Amen. What a word. What a word. We open up the doors of the church. The church doors have never been closed, but we extend an invitation. Somebody who have heard this great message this morning from Pastor Cox might want to accept Jesus as your personal savior. And if you have already accepted him as your personal savior, then you ought to want to run on and see what the end's going to be. Powerful message. The doors of the church are open. Open up the door of your heart. Come to Jesus. The door is open. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Jesus. Save. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. Oh, he will save you. Jesus will save you just now. Again, we thank Pastor Cox for such a very powerful message. God used you well this morning to preach yeah, his you. word, and we give thank him you, glory Jesus. for that. We want to thank everybody who has been cash-apping our ministry and sending us donations. 
Thank you so very much. You can catch after ministry by using the dollar sign Parenthood Ministries. The dollar sign Parenthood Ministries, if you want to write a check or a money order, you can make it out to the Parenthood Ministries. You can message my wife on Messenger on Facebook, or you can call us at 937-287-9353, and we can tell you where to direct your gifts. We uh, just gave out uh, two scholarships uh, through the West Dayton Caravan of Churches, and so we are now preparing for uh, our scholars program in June through the West Dayton Caravan of Churches, and those are some of the things that we do with the offerings that you send us as we do things for the community to help the people. Our motto is helping people help themselves. So we thank you again for your gifts and for your contributions. We ask that you keep them coming. Sow a seed in this ministry and reap a blessing for your life. Thank you so much for your gifts. Bible study tomorrow at 7 o'clock with Pastor Gloria Wright Cox at 7 p.m. on Monday. 5 o'clock in the morning, God loves all women, and she'll be there for Rise and Shine. She does Rise and Shine on Monday, uh, Monday Tuesday, Tuesday, and Friday. Friday. Amen. And the Bible class is Monday night at uh, 7 o'clock. We are going to be um, dismantling Soul for Worship, Joyful Praise for the rest of this year. We may bring it back again next year. We're doing so many things with this ministry, and she's paying more attention to her Afrotique shop. If you have not shopped in the Afrotique shop, go on the Facebook page for Afrotique and see some of the many items that she has in store in our Afrotique shop. That's another way that we raise money for the ministry. If you want to know more about the ministry, she will be working and making some additions to our website, but you can go www. ParenthoodMinistries.com is the website. You can get this wonderful message and other messages we have preached by going to the Parenthood Ministries YouTube channel. Please go to the YouTube channel and like the page. On Tuesday at 8 o'clock, Pastor Ogletree and I are still praying for people, and she will be advertising that number as she comes to you at 11 o'clock from Services from the Sanctuary. And uh, please tune in next Sunday for Angela Brinkley for Words of Encouragement, our evangelist. And uh, we hope that you will attend services at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church at 12 noon. And uh, the bishop and uh, Pastor Cox and I wish that congregation well. They're under our jurisdiction. And so we're glad you joined us. Join us again for prayer, praise, and worship at 8 o'clock on next Sunday morning. Pastor Carl. Amen, amen. The bishop has covered all of the the uh, announcements today. Um, please uh, attend any of those uh, services. Rise and Shine is only through God Loves All Women. So if you want to join, you um, see those services, you need to go to God Loves All Women Facebook page is a private page, and you must join uh, to be part of that page. Um, God is um, blessing, 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 blessing. I believe we have, are up to 154 women on this page. So uh, you heard me say I was uh, praying this morning. I was ministering early this morning to the ladies on that page. So God is good. Um, sometimes I tend to forget what time it is and I, I will call you. <laughs> Amen. But uh, send us your prayer request, okay? Uh, if I don't answer by uh, praying for you by text message, be be assured that I'm going to call you on Messenger, okay? And then if you don't answer the Messenger, then I'll call you on, on the phone on Messenger, okay? Uh, but God is good. Thank God for technology. And uh, we want to continue to pray for everyone that's on this uh, live today. I saw um, Sister, um, oh my goodness, Miss Ola. I saw you. I saw you. Good morning. Good morning. I saw Anthony Graham. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 
So we, I see Pastor Ogletree has made it. So God bless all of you. You see that the parenthood is moving, moving, moving. So and also pray to, for our support yes. group that's growing at yes. the hospital. Yeah, survivors and Caregivers United. Mm -hmm. And if you know anybody that's going through cancer, have them give us a call and be a part of this wonderful support group. Uh, we were two years old, right? Two. Two, two years. I've right. been doing it two years. Okay. okay. So that's all we have today. May God bless you and keep you. May heaven continue to smile upon you until we shall meet again. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord.